Combining Transformations, Lesson 9.5a. When we combine transformations, one transformation is followed by another. We can translate, then reflect, translate, then rotate, reflect, then translate, rotate, then translate. Ah, oh, we can even reflect, then rotate, or rotate, then reflect. So many combinations. They're also called a composition of transformations. In Lesson 9.4, we learned to algebraically represent transformations. We learned how to do rotations of 90 degrees, clockwise, negative 90 degrees, which is counterclockwise, 180 degrees. We learned how to reflect algebraically, and we learned how to translate. We learned the rules for translating right, left, up, and down. So, if you don't have these in your notes, you should Rewind a little bit, take a screenshot of this upper part up here, showing the rotations, and if you screenshot that, you can screenshot the bottom part that includes the translations. So here we have pre-image A, and it was reflected across the x-axis as the line of reflection to image B. Then B was rotated 90 degrees with the point 3 for X, negative 4 for Y as the center of rotation to triangle C. The sequence of reflection and rotation transformed A to C. And the size and shape didn't change, but the orientation did change. So we're going to walk through a sequence of several transformations. We're starting with this right triangle right here, and A is from this triangle reflecting across the x-axis. Since we reflected across the x-axis, we multiplied the y values by negative 1. This B triangle is from A triangle translating 4 units left. Since it was 4 units left, we have x minus 4 for our x value. Now we have triangle C over here. C is from B reflecting across the y-axis. Since it reflected across the y-axis algebraically, we multiplied the x values by negative 1. Now we're here. Now we're at D. We have D up here. It's from translating C up 6 units. Since we translated up 6 units, we added 6 to our Y values. Now we've gone from here, reflected across the X axis to get A, translated to get B, reflected across the Y axis to get C, and translated up to get D. So let's move down some more. E, right here, is from D rotating 90 degrees with negative 1, 2 as the center of rotation. On this vertex right here, it rotated 90 degrees. Since it rotated 90 degrees, our x value is multiplied by negative 1. Then we swapped the x and y values. And the sequence of transformations was a reflection, then a translation, then another reflection, then a translation, and then a rotation. From the original triangle to the final transformation E, the size and shape was retained, but the orientation changed. It went from pointing down like this to pointing that way. We can see where the right angle is in the triangle. And we can see the translations from A to B and then from C to D didn't change the orientation, but the reflection to A and then from B to C along with the rotation of D to E did change the orientation. The orientation changes for reflections, that's flips, and rotations, that's turns. The orientation stays the same, for translations, those are the slides. Let's try some higher order thinking and push our brains up a little bit. 
we can do translations and rotations as repeated reflections. So here, if you look at this triangle here, we did a reflection across the X and then a translation over to C here. So we went from to B to C by doing a reflection and then a translation. But we could move from here to here by doing three reflections. We start here and we reflect across. That's the reflection that we had originally. So that's one reflection. Then right here, using this as our line of reflection, we can reflect this across like that as if six for X right here was our line of reflection. Then we could use three for X as our line of reflection and reflect it again. So now we've reflected three times and got the same result as a reflection and a translation. Now let's take a look at this one. We have this triangle underneath here and it did a 180 degree rotation with three for X, zero for Y as the center of rotation. So it was right here and we did a 180 degree rotation so it went like that. Well, we could do this with two reflections instead of a rotation. If we're here, we can reflect it over the x-axis to here. Then we can reflect it again over here. Isn't that something? So we can do translations and rotations as repeated reflections. Okay, we finished that part and we're moving on to congruent figures. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.